The following victim's story is told in her own words. She does touch a little bit about her past and her history and marriages, which do include sexual assault and domestic violence. If these type of subjects upset you or trigger you, this is just to let you know that we do touch on these subjects during the story. Thanks for listening. I'm a victim of many crimes, like rape, domestic violence, child molestation, and being a single mother looking for love and a soulmate. This was my first mistake, because now I just let the crooked know how desperate I am to be with someone special. Please let other victims know, do not tell these crooks your sad life story, because they will use this to catch you in their traps. My mistake was telling them about my horrible marriages, so they used it against me and sweet-talked me all the way to the bank. Let victims know to limit their conversations with these scammers, or they'll use it to their advantage. This story is about David Gold, my second scammer who I met in August of 2018. The real person in the picture is a man named Frank. My son found his real photo and profile by doing a Google reverse image search. If I knew about this, I'd still have money in my account and not feel worthless, ashamed, and stupid. My story started like this. We met on Plenty of Fish, or POF. I just got divorced after 11 years of a horrible marriage, being a victim of rape from my first marriage and child molested by my stepfather and now a single mother, I was an easy target for these scammers. David is my second scammer. You thought I'd learn the first time being scammed because I did not want to give up on love, so I signed up with another website looking for love. The first week we talked about everything, texting for hours. By the second week, I was in love because he was everything I wanted in a soulmate. David, by now, was calling me his wife, Mrs. Gold. I don't remember what happens, but when he sent me his picture, I fell madly in love. I never thought a handsome man like David would actually love someone like me with my background. It turns out I was an easy target. Never tell anyone your life story until you meet in person. He told me he deals with stock trades. His parents passed away in a car accident when he was a teenager, so he was raised by relatives. His family owns pineapple farms all across the USA, and they import and export to other countries. His wife of 15 years passed away from cancer, leaving him with a son that is now 13 years old. After his wife passed away, leaving him no time to socialize. David told me that his son is older, he wants to marry again. David asked if this is my first time with online dating, because he was nervous. It was his first time. He told me his friend found true love online, so he wanted to do the same. And he thanked his friend for finding him and me together. The rest is history. David would shower me with dreams like building my dream home so I could have all my kids and grandkids under one roof. He promised me everything a lady would ever dream of having and a soulmate. David also told me he would pay off my credit cards and everyone in my family their credit cards as well. I would have a life I deserve because I'm very special and sorry that everything had happened in my life the way it did. He used God in the conversations like, God made you for me. We owe God everything. We will marry in church so we will have the best marriage in the world and everyone will be jealous. You name it, he used it in every romantic line in every book to sweet talk me. The next thing I knew, David sent me a deposit slip from a bank overseas with my name on it. David told me he wants to make sure that in case of his unexpected death, like his parents had died, he wants to make sure that me and his son would be taken care of for the rest of our lives. Later during the depositor transactions, unexpectedly, David did not realize that he had to pay a large penalty because the money is coming from overseas, so he asked if I would help him and I would be rewarded for helping him. I told David, I don't have any money, so he convinced me to take out a cash advance. Yes, I did exactly as he told me. I sent $10,000 to the account he gave me to pay. For the next three weeks I was pushed and shoved by him and the bank manager, who I thought at the same time was probably David. I would get threatened, emailed from the bank manager every day, telling me if I did not do as they said David will lose four million dollars and it's all my fault because I did not try. He made me feel so guilty that I tried to commit suicide because it was a very mean message to be blaming me if David loses all his hard-earned money. 
By this time, I've taken the money from my life savings, getting cash advances and opening credit cards, borrowing money from my son. The next thing I knew, I was over $50,000 in credit card debt, plus I made my son borrow ten k from his account to help. David promised my son he would get $100,000 for helping him borrow the money. David was very convincing, and no matter how much I wanted to stop sending him money, he would come up with another way for me to send money. David asked if I would give him my social security number, my password to all my banks and credit cards so he could pay off and put money in my account while he was working hard in China. This never happened because there was always excuse after excuse. Some examples? David's son, which goes by the name Richard, by this time another person is involved pretending to be the son and calling me mom, David would ask me to buy his son an iPhone so we can FaceTime. This never happened because there was always excuses like time difference or David was busy with work. While buying the iPhone, David asked if I would buy the family that was taking care of our son, as he stated, a phone. When the phone was delivered in Ghana, David told me FedEx would not release the phone until a penalty was paid, which was over $500. What do I do? Yes, I sent the money to the address he gave me. Right before him and Richard are supposed to come back to the USA, Richard got very ill and was in the emergency room. Again, David asked if I would try and get some money for the hospital bills. By this time, I have already went over my limits, so I had nothing left. David also promises me that as soon as the doctors release Richard, they will come home, again asking me for money, but the answer is still no, because I don't have anything left. I got tired of the excuses, so I asked David for proof that Richard was actually in the hospital. So David sent me proof of a doctor's note that appeared to have Richard and his flight information. Remember, all documents I received from David are fake. At the time, I did not know until I saw it shown on one of your videos. I was shocked. I wish I had saw it before sending all this money to Ghana. By the time I'm madly in love and hoping that David is my soulmate, even though I know he's not who he says he is, because he would text for hours telling me how lucky he was to have me in his life and how madly in love he is with me. After my son found the real person in the picture, I asked David why he's been lying to me. He replied because of his job. He had to keep his identity secure or his son and him would be in danger. It'll be a year this coming August. I'm still communicating with him because I'm going to get him from what he did to me and expose him to the world. He doesn't know that I'm on to him because he wants more money from me. I told David, until I see a real picture of him and Richard, he will not get another dime from me. He tried to convince me over and over, but I'm not going to fall for it again. I don't care if it takes me the rest of my life to catch these scammers. I will do it because they ruined my life and so many others. These crooks don't care for no one but themselves and will do whatever they can to steal from their victims. Thank you for letting me share my story. And we'd like to thank this lady for sharing her story. She's had a very unfortunate life and she's been the victim of a scam twice now. A little reminder to everyone who wants to catch their scammer. Keep in mind that a lot of these scammers are from places like West Africa, India, Pakistan. They're from countries where corruption runs rampant. And a lot of times these scammers are never caught. And they know this, so they keep continuing to scam. Our best advice to you is if you know you're being scammed, you know you're speaking to a scammer, block that person. Don't continue to toy with them, play with them, or have hopes of catching them because the reality is a lot of times these scammers are never caught. And as long as you're still communicating with them, they still think that they have a chance to either scam you out of more money or use you or your bank account as a money meal. Best advice? Block. As hard as it is to move forward, it's best to block the criminal rather than be in his clutches and play games with him. So thank you for sharing your story, and we hope that things work out for you in the future.